When people think about taxidermy, they often think of a shed or a workshop and everything's covered in blood. People always ask me about the eyes. Are the eyes real? I don't give them names. Sometimes the people who they came from give them names. My name's Lucy Mascord and I'm a natural history conservator. I work at the Lancashire Conservation Studios. I'm responsible for the conservation of taxidermy and biological materials that are in our museums. When people ask me what I do, I have to go into lengthy explanations and I usually have to explain to people that I'm not um, a conservative either. So um, people can get confused over the word conservator. One of the main issues for taxidermy is that they're composite objects. They're made out of lots of different things. The skin in itself is a huge challenge to preserve. This is a project I'm working on at the moment for the Grant Museum of Zoology at UCL. It has a lot of tears and splits in the skin. Around the face, there's some surface cracks. There's a really large split in the groin here. So we'll have to put in some filler inside there and probably humidify the skin so that we can bring it back together without it falling apart. Got a koala bear here. There are some holes in him. The bottoms of the claws as well are very damaged. These will be the original stitches. They're not holding them together at all. This woolly monkey, who's undergone quite a lot of conservation work, there's a, still quite a considerable amount of work to do here. A lot of the chemicals that we work with are hazardous. Arsenic, lead, mercury that might be on the skins. Natural history collections have historically been quite poorly looked after, particularly as taxidermy goes through periods of unpopularity. So we want to preserve them and make sure that they can continue being used in our museums. Taxidermy was very popular in Victorian times and a lot of the people who were practicing would have definitely have been self-taught. You can get all types of stuff inside, so this one is stuffed with just dried grasses. This one has a cork inside and then is stuffed with cotton wool and that's quite common. And cotton wool is really acidic. It can cause the skin to degrade. Sometimes it's stuffed with sand and peat, so they're really heavy. I often get asked, are the eyes real? And yes, no, the eyes aren't real. They're made out of glass usually. You can get acrylic eyes nowadays. So I have a large collection of eyes for whenever I need to replace eyes and specimens. I can show you inside the freezer. <laughs> when you're in this line of work, people know that you collect dead animals. So people tend to see things and they'll send me a message saying, do you want this? My newest acquisition is this Canada goose that my husband picked up for me this week. My husband was actually on his lunch break, he was wearing his suit at the time and he went and picked this up and um, just, put, just popped it in some bin bags so he would get it home and freeze it as quickly as possible because I have some freezers at home as well. But as you'll see it's um, still in really good condition. When this specimen is prepared for taxidermy, we'll make an incision down the abdomen here and remove the insides. Usually the only bones that would be left inside a piece of taxidermy would be the skull. The whole skeleton would very rarely be completely left in. There's this misconception that taxidermy is stuffed, that you've made an incision and then you've stuffed lots of newspaper or tissues or something inside. But actually what the taxidermist would actually do is create a form and then arrange the skin over it. So you'll defrost them and you'll take measurements all along the abdomen. We're trying to get something as near to the actual size of that specimen itself. This form will be a stoat or a weasel. Is like any job really. It's a job that I come to every day and you get funny looks but there's huge misconceptions around taxidermy and um, it's not seen as an ethical practice nowadays. Of course going out and shooting animals nowadays is unethical and I completely agree with that but for a start we're dealing with historical taxidermy. 
most taxidermists nowadays have an ethical practice and deal with animals that died of natural causes. I love animals. I think any taxidermist have a huge love of the natural world. And people are always going to have this morbid curiosity. I don't think that will ever go away. So I think taxidermy will be sticking around for a long time yet. Yeah.